kind of embarrassing. I mean, you know, we're in the tech industry, we're, at the, we're on the leading edge, where the best practices are what we do at Six Sigma, it's, you know, and yet in, in the investment recovery industry, where the bulk of the corporations maintain the most significant benefit is in manufacturing. And in industries like petroleum, and plastics, and chemicals, and paper. Uh, computers and IT equipment is way down here. Again, it's you know, largely an afterthought. And because it's not a core part of your business or your institution or your organization, often it's, you know, the responsibility is left to the guy down in shipping to get rid of it. Or worse yet, the guy in facilities. Or we do things like this, like, well, we donate all that stuff. And, you know, as well-intentioned and as, and as uh, you know, and as good as those programs are, you know, there's significant pitfalls. Now the biggest thing that may shock you is that I'm not here to tell you that you know, we might not necessarily just buy all your stuff because that's not really what the best principles for asset recovery and asset disposal are. In the Investment Recovery Association, which we've been a member of for years, the number one practice for investment recovery and investment and, and, and return on investment is reuse. So the first choice in looking at your IT assets prior to disposal is, is there someplace else we can use it? Is there someplace else we can deploy it within our own organization? You know, the second piece would be to, you know, potentially uh, would be to recondition it or to uh, donate it, uh, provision it for employee purchase, And then there's recondition, resell, reclaim, or, you know, so those are the titles, but the primary one, the one that has the most value to both you as an organization and the environment and limits your liability is proper reuse. And in the category of reuse, I would also put dash resell. So, I mean, you know, so remarketing it is pushing it towards a, a form of reuse. Why worry? Well, there are cradle to grave responsibilities that you maintain for all of your assets. And there are a number of companies that are in the business, so to speak. And like I said, many organizations have a guy or someone who takes care of this problem for them. It's something, you know, because that's what it is ultimately. It's a problem. I mean, most people's asset recovery and asset disposal programs live uh, still in their closets, or in storerooms, or in a room with a bunch of office furniture, or they use some of the stuff as footstools in their offices, or it's piling up next to file cabinets, or it's in the data center, kind of as, as a secondary wall. Um, you know, there's really no rhyme and reason to the way they handle their IT assets. And getting rid of it is our ultimate goal. Just get it out of here. I can't tell you how many times we hear people just get it out of here would be a huge favor. But you do have, you know, there are a number of laws on the books. The one, and frankly, it's kind of interesting, in terms of the force of law, consumer recycling is much stricter than corporate recycling. With the exception of one thing, and that's CRT monitors. Because of the hazardous waste present in the monitors, where it, you know, those are all covered by CERT. But we do a much better job as consumers than we do as business, you know, as individual consumers than we do as business people in terms of even getting rid of our, our e-waste. How many of you, I mean, my wife is a green Nazi. So the thought of throwing away, putting a TV in the trash is just unthinkable. Even if it's a 13-inch, 20-year-old television that hasn't been turned on in five years, that's going in the back of the car, and we're going to wait in line for an hour just to dispose of it. You know, at the local Oprah facility, because it's the right thing to do. But when it comes to our IT assets, we really don't think that way. We just want it gone. Um, the point of this slide, basically, is that there are a number of laws in place that are beginning to take 
take force that will ultimately impact business recycling, business e-waste, and what we do with it, and what our responsibilities are. Once again, the real threat is not the force of law. The real threat is not the force of law. The real force of law is what happens if, in the event that a, you know, a laptop that you've decided to dispose of ends up with confidential patient information or confidential customer information or confidential employee information. You know, we have another, we have a partner who assists us in, in removing, you know, PCs, laptops, servers, that sort of thing, because that's their area of expertise. And he recently did a large acquisition from a, from a corporate entity of 2,500 laptops. And all the hard drives were degaussed. Every single hard drive was degaussed. <laughs> Triple white, the whole line, you know, on site, no issue. Right? Except that they forgot that the wireless adapters that were in each one of those 2,500 laptops were still configured. And once the new operating system was loaded onto the laptops for resale, potentially could have gained access to the corporate network. Potentially. Never thought about disabling the wireless adapters. Wasn't a, and disabling the wireless configurations on the, on the device. I'm simply degaussing the hard drive would take care of that. I think I'm not a degauss, I'm not a security guy. But those are, you know, imagine those again being sold out on eBay. The other piece of it is really kind of, you know, the other piece of our responsibility is, is a little different. But the other part of our responsibility is, you know, to dispose of products in, in a way that is, you know, earth friendly, so to speak. And I, if you have assets that are not remarketable, and you know that, and someone is willing to pay you for them, I can assure you that the wrong thing is happening to you know that there's no remark, somebody here said that they had a bunch of 1924 Cisco switches laying around, which have a market value of about 50 cents, if that. And if someone's willing to pay you considerably more for that, the wrong thing is happening. And what are those wrong things? Well, this is just a brief example of that. This is a 60 minutes expose that was uh, aired about 18 months ago. And it talks about the, uh, the black chip market, so to speak, in China. 